Hey guys, welcome back to another exciting Photoshop tutorial. Today's episode is gonna be a special one because I'm gonna be showing you how you can add the mind flayer from Stranger Things to your own photographs. Now, I'm a huge Stranger Things nerd and I've been meaning to create a photo like this for quite some time now, but today I finally had some time to sit down and recreate this effect to the best of my abilities. So hopefully by showing you the steps that I took, you are also going to be able to give your own photographs some cool Hawkins vibe. So before I actually jump into Photoshop to show you how to recreate this effect, here's one thing that you should probably keep in mind. The effect is actually not as difficult as it looks, but it is still a composite. And with composites, you're always gonna be blending together images which were taken with completely different exposure settings under completely different lighting conditions. So how good of an end result you can achieve will depend entirely on how well you can blend together certain parts of your final image. So definitely keep that in mind when you choose your main photo, because if you choose a very overexposed, sunny and bright photograph, it's gonna be very difficult to blend that together with the Mind Flayer shot, which is clearly this dark, nighttime, surreal image. So now that we got this out of the way, let's jump into Photoshop and I'm gonna show you how to blend your images together. All right, so I opened up Photoshop and imported the photo that I want to edit. This is a photo I took recently and I already cropped it and color graded it, so we're ready to go. How you edit your original photo is gonna matter a lot in later stages of the edit, so make sure you end up with a nice, moody, dark image. I also opened up the Mind Flayer photo, which you can download from the description of this video. The editing process consists of two steps. First, we're gonna mask out the sky from the main photo and replace it with the Mind Flayer. And in the second step, we're gonna make sure that the colors of the original photo and the Mind Flayer match as much as possible. Needless to say, this is the part that is the most complicated and it's gonna take some trial and error to figure out how to match the colors of the two images seamlessly. But first, we need to get rid of the sky, so let's head over to Select, Select and Mask. Here, all you need to do is click inside of the sky and let Photoshop do its job. You can later modify this mask if you need to, but try to make sure that you mask out the sky as best as you can. Right now, I don't have a lot of time for this, so I'm just gonna do a lazy job, but you should definitely take your time with this if you want a great end result. Play around with the feather option on the right and use the Refine Edge brush tool on the left to perfectly mask out the smaller details of the image. Once you're finished with your mask, hit OK, and then with the layer mask selected, press Ctrl or Command I. This is going to invert the colors of the layer mask, and now the sky disappeared. Now we need to put the mind flayer underneath this layer, so let's grab it and drop it underneath it, and let's also position it and resize it so that it actually covers the empty area. Now comes the tricky part, because as you can see the two images don't blend together too well. It's not horrible how they fit together, but we can definitely work on this to make it better. The first thing I immediately notice is that our foreground is too bright compared to the Mind Flayer, so let's add an exposure adjustment layer and lower that exposure a little bit. Here you want to make sure that you clip the adjustment layer to the main layer by clicking on this icon here. This way the adjustment layer is only going to affect the layer underneath it and the rest of the image will remain intact. Here we only want to modify our main image and we don't want to touch the Mind Flayer, so that's why we do the clipping. The next thing we need to take care of is the color cast on the concrete. The Mind Flayer is casting this ridiculous red shadow or whatever, and we definitely need to replicate that on our concrete here, otherwise the photo doesn't look realistic at all. So we're gonna grab another adjustment layer, this time a hue and saturation adjustment layer, clip it once again to the main layer, and we're gonna check in the colorize option, and we're gonna add some hard red by playing around with these sliders. The hue you want to keep on the left side to mimic that red color cast, the saturation can go up a little bit and the lightness can go down quite a bit as well. Now this looks ridiculous, obviously, so we're gonna play around with the blending modes a little bit. For this photo I think soft light looks pretty good, but it's still a bit too harsh so I'm also gonna drop the opacity on this to about 20 or hmm, let's have it at 30 like that. Now it's starting to look a little better. We got rid of that teal bluish color cast that was originally on the concrete, but we still need to up it a little bit. So let's add yet another hue and saturation adjustment layer. 
Let's again clip it to our main layer and this time let's not check the colorize box but instead choose a red hue, increase the saturation quite a bit and the lightness can actually stay where it is. Once again we need to play around with the blending modes, this time I choose darken and go down with the opacity only a little bit, maybe around 70% works for this adjustment layer. Now it's starting to really come together, but this last adjustment layer is affecting some parts of my image that I would rather keep the way they were, so I'm gonna select the layer mask, choose a soft black brush and paint over the areas where I don't need this adjustment layer to be active. Now at this point you can drop the photo into Lightroom and make some final adjustments that will affect the entire composite, but this is generally speaking the gist of it. Do keep in mind that these settings worked well for my photo, but your own image might require slightly or completely different values. This video was only to show you the general editing progress and the steps that I took to create my own photo. Alright guys, so we're pretty much finished with this effect at this point. Of course you can still mess around with some of the settings that I showed you or you can make sure that the mask is spot on, but that would make this video about an hour long if I did that, so for our purposes we're pretty much done at this point. Hit that like button if you enjoyed this video and definitely tag me on Instagram if you recreate this photo using my technique. I would love to see what you guys can come up with and it's always nice to connect with you on Instagram. So I'll be back soon with more videos and until then, peace.